Are you ready for me to go through and do a deep dive providing feedback into one of your actual statements of purpose? Well, stick around and let's do this thing today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh coming at you with another episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to advance your career in academia. Now, I've got a real special one for you here today, part of our new series where I'm going through and giving comprehensive feedback on real-world CVs as well as statements of purpose that you guys have sent me. Now, as part of this limited series, what I'm trying to do is to be able to not only provide feedback to the individuals who have sent me these documents and they've all been redacted of course so you can't figure out who they are but at the same time I've also tried to be able to make these reviews deeply instructional so that you know exactly from somebody who's served on application committees in the past when it comes to getting into grad school getting a postdoctoral fellowship tenure track faculty position or an industry position and also somebody who's run several successful companies now and has done a lot of hiring and a lot of firing in my career I'm hoping that I can give you as much constructive feedback so that you guys can optimize your statements of purpose to be able to get a successful outcome in whatever you're trying to achieve. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you guys would like to help support the channel and all of my efforts in creating content for you, please consider becoming a patron by joining our Patreon, the link for which is right down here right now. You get a ton of exclusive content. You get to recommend topics for live streams that I try to host. And in addition to that, you get a personalized shout out from me in an episode, as well as access to discounts off one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Now, like I said, this is a limited series. I won't always be doing it. That said, I will always be doing coaching sessions. So if you want me to do a deep dive into your statement of purpose, uh, whatever that happens to be, it could be a personal statement for a clinical psych PhD program, uh, it could be something where you're putting together a cover letter for an industry position, whatever it happens to be, I've got you covered and you can go ahead and book a session with me one-on-one -on -one via the website below. So like this video, subscribe to the channel and let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is to read you the email that was sent to me to accompany this particular personal statement. Now, if you guys haven't already watched our videos in this series concerning taking a look at both CVs as well as real world personal statements, definitely check out our CV videos as well because this individual was kind enough to send us a CV also. So you'll be able to see their CV that accompanied this personal statement. And the reason that this is important, guys, is that in terms of a CV itself, uh, versus a personal statement, the personal statement should provide kind of a, a narrative, almost a short form of the CV. The CV is very blunt, it's very punchy, it doesn't really tell a story per se, whereas the personal statement is the part of your application package that's really going to inject some humanity into the other materials you have, okay? So let's go ahead, I'm going to read this email to you in its entirety. Hi Dr. Singh, greetings from China. My name is such and such, and I'm a Chinese fan of yours. I'm writing to join your free CV and personal statement review videos project. My CV and personal statements are attached below. I have already submitted my applications and received the results from last December to this May, but I only got two offers out of 10 applications. In this case, I'm considering reapplying to my dream school, which is the London School of Economics, or LSE, and I would like to rewrite my CV and personal statement. I hope to gain some advice from you to make my application better. Your videos have already helped me a lot, especially when it came to preparing for grad school interviews. I really appreciate your personal guidance from the perspective of a doctor. If my documents are not chosen in your videos, it's okay, because I can always also learn from others, so that's very kind. Okay, guys. 
So let's go ahead and head, uh, head into this thing itself. As you can see here, my cursor I've highlighted in yellow over on the right hand side currently. So that as I go through or even do things like, you know, make selections of things on the screen, you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So keep in mind that this is the first time that I've read through this personal statement. The reason that I've done that, and if not, some people may say, you know, have prepared for this video is because whoever's actually reading your personal statements, they're not going to read the personal statement four or five times and come up with a bunch of notes on it. Realistically, they're going to give you one chance. You've got one shot. I want you to think about that song, Lose Yourself by Eminem, right? You've got one shot, do not miss your chance to blow, right? That's the idea. And remember that my general guidance when it comes to writing statements of purpose, i.e. personal statements, is to essentially incorporate up to six different elements, right? So usually you're going to have some sort of a narrative introductory paragraph that is going to provide, number one, a hook, and then it's going to essentially take you inside the story surrounding that hook, which inevitably will lead into why it is that you got interested in this particular field. Okay, after that, so in this case, the individual is applying, as you can see up here, for an MSc, so a Master's in Science uh, in Marketing. So how do they get interested in a career in marketing? That's what I want to know up front. And then I want to hear about your academic experience that kind of has prepared you for graduate studies. How did you do? Did you win any academic awards? Maybe you were on the Dean's List whatever it happens to be. What were your big achievements? After that, we're going to talk about either research experience or practical experience, depending on the nature of the graduate degree. For example, let's say you're applying to, like I'm a psychologist, a clinical psychology PhD program, you would want to put research experience first, things like publications or research internships uh, and so forth, conference presentations, external grant funding, all that kind of stuff would go in there, okay? And then also you would have in-field experience after that because obviously clinical psych PhDs, they don't just teach you to be a researcher but also how to be a clinician. And so these could be things like clinical internships or maybe you worked in a resource room at a high school helping out kiddos who've been diagnosed with an intellectual disability. Whatever it happens to be where you've got some experience with uh, vulnerable populations or potential client groups, you want that to be in there. And obviously this will change depending on the field that you're in, right, in terms of the order that you put things. So for instance, maybe it's not a clinical psych PhD, maybe it's a clinical psych PsyD, in which case you of course would want to put practical experience practical clinical experience above research experience. And usually the academic experience, research experience, and practical experience paragraphs are either just that, they're individual paragraphs, or in some cases they are combined. And I talk about that in other of these videos that you can watch in this series. But after that, I want to hear about the goodness of fit between you and this specific program. Especially if it's a doctorate, I want to hear about not just the program, but the fit with the target supervisor. And really give me enough information so that I know that you know exactly who this person is. So like in psychology, I, saw, I see personal statements a lot about, you know, uh, I'm interested in working with Dr. Johnson because they do work with emotion and schizophrenia. And that is completely insufficient to justify working with that individual. You have to believe me on that, okay? You gotta be really high specificity. As I mentioned earlier, if you guys want me to do something like this for you and one-on-one -on -one we can work on your CV to optimize it and same thing with your personal statement. Maybe you don't even know where to start. I'm a good person to talk to about that, okay? Uh, and I do everything very lovingly. As I go through these things, I tend to be very blunt, uh, but I do it from the perspective of someone who does not have the deep pleasure of knowing you. And so because of that, there's kind of no humanity in the review of these things, right? And um, this is exactly how grad school supervisors look at things. So you just need to understand that it is a real world situation in terms of me looking through these things, okay? And then finally, the very end, you're gonna have a paragraph and the paragraph will essentially close this entire thing up nice and tight, okay? And it'll also thank them for their valued time and consideration, as well as uh, you offering to provide any ancillary materials if they are requested. So let's go ahead, we'll start up here at the top with the first paragraph. Uh, usually one thing that I do even before I read is that I kind of zoom out like this a little bit, get a sense of how long it is and how long the paragraphs are, right? So usually if I'm gonna have a nice, tight, really short paragraph, the only one that will be that way is the final paragraph. So the first thing that I see up here, that that's really short, so that kind of strikes me, right? Now I recall from this individual CV that they did a great job redacting certain things. So if you see a gap like here, for example, or here, 
here or here. Don't worry, they didn't leave anything out. They just redacted that information, okay? So this is a nice tight two-page personal statement. This is usually what I'm going to expect to see is something approximately this length, okay? So this is not out of the norm at all. So here we go. Remember, the first thing that I'm looking for is some kind of a narrative introduction, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a read. I consider myself a marketing storyteller rather than a student majoring in marketing. So I understand what you're going for. Uh, I would say that the use of the term storyteller, marketing storyteller, when I say it's a little bit hokey, what I mean is that it's a little like hippy dippy. So, you know, having lived in England for so many years myself, having been an Oxford guy, having, you know, uh, members of the family, and obviously many dozens of very dear friends in academia in the UK, especially for a school like LSE, I, I can't say that that would come across particularly well. I don't think that it comes across particularly professionally, even though I do understand what you're going for. Okay, so let's reread. I consider myself a marketing storyteller rather than a student majoring in marketing. This is a pursuit. So that's the thing is a, a pursuit. So what is a pursuit? Being a marketing storyteller? Driven by my passion for designing creative content and using marketing analytics to underpin successful projects. Uh, I, w I would say to drive instead of to underpin successful projects. Uh, and also what kind of projects. This MSc program, okay, yeah, so this isn't gonna work. Using the word this won't work, right? Um, so this MSc program provides modules that fit my interest perfectly. Okay, so a, a few things here. Number one is that you say this MSc, but you're not specifying what MSc we're talking about, right? So you, you know, University of Newcastle's MSc program, da 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 and then provides, then it says modules. Make sure based on the wording on the website for this that they're using the term modules, right? These things differ depending on country, but the term module is not as commonly used as things in terms of, you know, coursework, you know, provides coursework that, you know, fits my interest perfectly, right? So, and then the other thing is that it, it's a little bit too much about you, especially from the British perspective, it's a little bit too much about you. Right, so, and what I mean by that is that it's modules that perfectly fit my interest. So, specifically, if this is a marketing degree that is not just teaching based, if there's any kind of research supervision, the idea uh, that essentially a potential supervisor would be reading this and the only thing that they're seeing is how things interest you. Think about being in a relationship, for example, which ends up being a one-sided relationship where you really only care about what you want. You don't care about what the other person is looking for or wants in the relationship, right? It has to be a two-way thing, okay? So let's take a look again in terms of that first paragraph, right? Just overall. So remember that what we're looking for is some kind of a narrative. So the first sentence, I think you gave it your best shot to be able to hook me, but not only did it not hook me, it came across as a little bit hippy dippy, which is not gonna work in terms of the cultural background, especially for a school uh, like, uh, like LSE, if that's your target program that you really wanna go to, which I, you know, I really respect that you have a target program, uh, but that's just something that you should know about, okay? Uh, uh, the second thing is that there's no real structure to it. Basically, what you're saying is, you know, I'm a marketing storyteller, quote, quote, which you don't really expound upon after that, right? So designing creative content doesn't necessarily make you a storyteller, and definitely using marketing analytics does not necessarily make you a storyteller, right? And then you say underpinning successful projects, but what success looks like is so different for every client that you would have, right? And then after that, this MSc program, you didn't define what it is, provides modules, which is a term that's not, you know, as frequently used as others, that fit my interests perfectly. And again, that seems like it's mostly about you, right? So the next thing that I would hope to be able to see is kind of a description of your background, okay? So let's take a look. My career goal is to become a strategic marketing manager who can utilize the art and science of marketing communications, such as data visualization, to provide an excellent service to customers in an innovative way. Okay, so this is a lot of marketing talk, but it doesn't have a lot of substance. So I like that you're saying that your career goal is to become a strategic marketing manager. That's awesome, right? And then who can utilize art and science of marketing communications. This is basically an unnecessary clause. 
right? And then using only one example, such as data visualization. Again, this is kind of a standard marketing thing in this day and age, right? And so because of that, it's not making you stand out at all. And then to provide uh, an excellent service to customers in an innovative way. If you weren't going to do that, or uh, then you shouldn't be applying for a master's, right? I.e. anybody who is going to be applying for this program could essentially say, uh, literally, so what I'm highlighting right now, they could say all of that and it would just be totally standard. It doesn't make you stand out at all, okay? But I do like that the first part is that you're specifying what your career goal is. From my previous studies in marketing, okay, so what does that mean? I mean, undergraduate studies. Keep in mind that these individuals who are looking at this are going to be folks who are, you know, professors in graduate programs. So hearing previous studies suggests that there's been kind of extensive studies. So this may be a little bit perceived as a little bit, you know, hyperbolic up here, this piece here, right? For my previous studies in marketing, I realized that there is a gap between my skill set and the hiring requirements for knowledge of how to turn data into insights to guide strategy designs from a managerial standpoint. This is a lot of words or whatever. You can just tell right there I'm stumbling over this. Uh, and it's not really clear exactly what you're saying. Um, so this is from my previous studies in marketing suggesting that it's educational knowledge, right? But now you're basically talking about hiring requirements. So I don't really see what the connect is there. So I realize that there's a gap between my skill set and the hiring requirements. So that's not from your previous studies in marketing. That's just presumably from things like going online and taking a look at job requirements, I'm, I'm assuming, right? Uh, and uh, it's between my skill set and, and the hiring requirements, it should be like for some type of jobs, but now you're going back to for knowledge of how to da 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 So what you're actually talking about here is the gap, and this is where the confusion comes from in this sentence, okay? So for knowledge of how to turn data into insight. So this is, again, it's turn data into insights to guide strategy from a managerial standpoint. There's a lot of information in there, okay? Um, so also, uh, presumably, uh, do, you, do you want to be a manager? Is this, you know, something that you're passionate about? This hasn't been mentioned before. So um, never good to be able to use a word like lack. Never mention anything kind of in a, in a negative light. Right. In terms of like this is you can say something like, uh, you know, I'm keen to develop skills surrounding that, 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 as opposed to I lack practical experience. So I'm keen to gain practical experience. Right. So in making strategic decisions. So here's the thing. Right. Um, just understand that at the undergraduate level, and this is a blow to a lot of people. I know that it was to me when I was still an undergrad to hear this, right? But but please understand that it's coming from a loving place. So no, uh, as an undergraduate or as a master's student, you are lower than junior. So because of that, talking about that you want to get experience in making strategic decisions at organizations is not going to happen, right? Um, so this is not something that you're going to do in graduate school, right? So just understand that. Furthermore, it is generally believed that marketing is equal to sales in China, comma, which is contrary to the wave of digitalization in today's markets. Again, I, I, I'm not understanding how exactly this is a clean, this does not cleanly follow the information that was earlier in the paragraph. It all, this almost seems like it should be another paragraph, especially it does it does not follow on from exactly what you're saying here, okay? And then this is, uh, however, I do recommend not having multiple sentences that are like, furthermore, comma, however, comma, right? Therefore, comma, so on and so forth, right? So, however, comma, I believe that the influence of marketing can and should be treasured. No, take out a sentence like this. Do not say something like that, something like should be treasured. It's overly subjective. Right. And uh, again, the like brutal reality of graduate school, ask any like graduate students, they don't really care what you think should be treasured, right? Like that you believe that it should be treasured. Also, it's something that's obvious. So the sentence doesn't really mean anything because it's obvious. As a result, I would like to further develop my knowledge and skills by gaining the most cutting edge marketing insights. Learned. OK, so literally this these pieces here is identical to what you've previously said in terms of the gap between your skill set and hiring requirements, right? As well as lacking practical experience, right? This is just another way of saying the exact same thing and it being in the same paragraph is highly redundant. So next, which I can apply to practical challenges 
in the challenging environment. So challenges and challenging, that's not good. You got to change that environment. Wait, wait. So this doesn't make any sense. So you want to develop these things, but you want to apply them in the environment of the MSC at LSE. That doesn't make sense. Presumably, you want to go to LSE to get the MSC to gain these things that I'm highlighting right now. In other words, this almost makes it seem like what you're applying for is some kind of an internship or a job position and not an MSC. Because what you're saying is that you want to develop these things and then apply them in the program as opposed to get them through the program, okay? Next. My undergraduate study, again, see, the issue is up here. Didn't you just say studies somewhere? Let me see. From my previous studies in marketing and then down here to my undergraduate studies, was it plural or singular? Choose one. Has laid a solid foundation for further studying in marketing. Specifically, I have become interested. Yeah, don't say I've become interested. So you've, you know, you've developed the skill set, right? So people don't care about what you've developed an interest in. They care much more about what you've developed skill sets in, right? In the combination of marketing and social psychology, e.g. the self theory. So this capitalization does not make sense. If this is a proper noun, then both self and theory need to be capitalized, which has helped me develop a sophisticated, under okay, uh, drop a word like sophisticated. Uh, the average graduate school person who does not like uh, individual who does not know you is going to read this and think it comes across as extremely arrogant for you to claim that you have a sophisticated understanding of things. Okay, develop a sophisticated understanding of how customers make decisions. Yeah, there's no way it's not possible for somebody at the undergraduate level to claim a sophisticated understanding of something that even PhDs in clinical psych or IO psych who've been doing this for 50 years have an understanding of okay to further learn about this to change it to learn further about this i conducted multiple research projects one of which focused on impulsive consumer behaviors in the context of live stream shopping okay i divided participants and okay this is too this is already you're getting too deep here okay this is too high specificity in terms of you talking about the research that you did uh, you're ba ba talking about things into two categories, unnecessary, right? You did a good job of explaining this stuff here. That's enough, okay? During this process, I learned how to design experiments. Okay, that's not really possible to be able to learn. There are many, many hundreds of experimental designs that are out there. This suggests that you know all of them, right? Which is not correct. And generate useful information from data using SPSS. I always recommend to people not to use SP or not to rec talk about SPSS. I uh, do respect. I was also like the SPSS dude undergrad, but in graduate school, unless you're doing the most elementary of analyses, uh, SPSS has a wonderful graphical user interface. I am not trying to bash SPSS. What I'm trying to say is that in grad school, unless you're using something like uh, you know some sort of an add-on module for more complex analyses like SEM using Amos, you know, as a module or something on SPSS, the likelihood you're going to be using SPSS is pretty low. So that's not going to help you out a lot. If you watch my other videos, you know that I sincerely recommend reading the method sections of your target supervisors uh, last, let's say, like uh, reading the method, uh, like past maybe one year, two years of publications, find out what stats programs they use and then try to learn those. In the e-marketing module of my undergrad code, this is not going to mean anything to anybody. Right, so this doesn't mean anything, right? So you can say that you completed a digital marketing course or something like that during your undergraduate studies, but e-marketing module is not gonna mean anything. I studied case studies from social media marketing with marketing models based on the consumer journey. Okay, so I'm still not really understanding what this has to do with, with anything really. So remember that undergraduate studies, here we should be talking about overall academic performance, right? And here we're really getting into the weeds of things. So you say you conducted multiple research projects. Uh, okay, as maybe it was as part of an internship, for example. Maybe you worked somewhere for a summer. Um, maybe you were an intern at a lab uh, that was on your campus, right? These are the things that are important to talk about. Do you have any publications arising from these research projects, right? What types of analyses did you end up like learning how to do if they're beyond a regression, right? No correlational stuff, no, you know, measures of central tendency or anything like this. What is unique about you that you're bringing to the table? That's the idea, right? Right now, we're basically saying that you took a digital marketing course, which doesn't make you, you know, unique. Again, this thing about realizing the importance, again, that doesn't really do anything for you, right? Unless you already have experience, which maybe you do. 
uh, having experience in AI, cloud, and Python type stuff in e-commerce, right? If you don't, though, just taking classes and realizing these things are important does, isn't really doing you any favors in the context of a statement of purpose, okay? The more I learn, the more... Ca- okay, I always av- avoid things like this, right? It's overly emotional and inappropriate. The more I learn, the more captivated I am becoming with the way in which technology impacts on consumers and businesses. I know, just delete the whole thing. Therefore, I would like to further develop my knowledge on how to generate computer insights for data and then market. Okay, the problem with this is that literally, it, it's almost the exact same language that you're using here in the second paragraph. So there's no flow to the personal statement currently, right? There has to be a flow the entire way through, right? Uh, and essentially, there's no skeleton, there's no structure to the thing. It's just a whole bunch of stuff about, it's just a whole bunch of words basically, right? I need the structure, okay? Uh, So this is the point in the personal statement where if I was the actual target supervisor, I would stop reading and put the piece aside. Okay, now I'll keep going just as a a practical tool for for everybody who's watching. Okay, I have also worked as an intern in both. Okay, so that's great in both international and national companies to put into practice what I have learned from my studies. Okay. For example, when I was an intern at da-da-da, a world-leading data insights and consulting company, I work with the marketing manager and the editor of the consulting. Uh, okay, so if this is a journal name, be sure to italicize it, okay? To improve, um, okay, then remove the comma, it's unnecessary, there's no independent clause. Uh, to improve our, indep- uh, sorry, our dependent clause, to improve our marketing content with the insights, okay, too much insights, insights, data insights, These sorts of things, right? It's too much. Just change the word, okay? Um, Gain from analyzing data. Okay, how did you analyze it? Such as the number of new users and the frequency of visits to blah, blah, blah's website. By using this information to create a targeted strategy. Okay, but what was the targeted strategy, essentially? Obviously, you can't disclose that much, but it just, it doesn't, it's too high sensitivity, right? We gained over 1,500 new followers. Okay, so this is dangerous, right? In three months, um, when it, if this is a world leading data insights and consulting company, 1,500 new companies uh, followers in three months is not impressive, I would argue, right? Or at least it, it wouldn't seem so to folks at LSC, I can tell you, right? So this is maybe something, maybe you can say something like, we tripled the number of new followers in three months. That's more impressive than giving an end like 1,500. And developed our relationship with clients. Okay, what does that mean? Developed it did with clients. I mean, did you did you get new clients? I mean, that would be very impressive. But developed our relationship with clients doesn't really tell me anything, which led to the company's turnover reaching over seven hundred sixty thousand RMB in a quarter. Okay, um, so what exactly? What role exactly did you play with in that? Okay, I also applied for internships as an account executive in copywriting. No, okay, there's no need for commas here and here, and in internet operations. Okay, so I don't understand. You applied for them or you got them? And if you did get them, if you mentioned what the things were up here in terms of the company and who you worked with, you should mention them here too. When I produced creative content for a furniture brand while working at something media group, okay, did... Okay, which of these three does that apply to? Whatever the media group was. I started by considering the psychological needs of target customers and then wrote a social media post focused on lifestyle. Okay, I don't understand why this is in quotes. I don't understand why it's italicized. And I don't understand. So writing a social media post could be a single Twitter post, for example, right? Was it maybe a blog or a digital newsletter post? Uh, Sorry, a digital newsletter. You know, what was it? Um, And use the latest social media hotspot topic. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of that as the keyword of the marketing communication. Okay, that doesn't make sense to me. Overall, the total page view was over 80,000. Again, this doesn't really mean anything because I understand that it may sound impressive to you, but for some of these folks who are doing press releases where, or like publishing articles, like for example, I published an article once that got 30,000 views in a day, right? So it's just like, you know, the thing now has millions of views. 80,000 is not a lot. Right. I know that it may seem like it, but it's not. So it's one of these things where, you know, we just need to express the same thing in a different way that doesn't use N. And when I say N, I mean like total count. OK, so we shouldn't use that. The brand attract more. Than OK, so this doesn't mean anything. What is young when you say attracted more? What does that mean? I, right. I mean, does it mean that they actually bought something? 
which would be wonderful, right? That's what we want. And it is invariably recognized by the public. Okay, never use a word like invariably because it's not necessarily true. And recognized by the public, what does that mean? 80,000 individuals is not a lot of individuals. Okay, to be able to, to operationalize the public as 80,000 individuals is just not true. Right. Again, guys, per usual, you know, when I go through these things, I'm absolutely brutal, as you know. But like the reason that I'm brutal is because I care. Right. And again, the likelihood that anybody is going to be this straightforward with you is basically zero. Right. And I want to make sure that these things get changed before you apply, because otherwise the individuals like myself are actually going to be looking at this. They're not going to give you any second chance at anything. You got one shot and I will have, would have already stopped reading this. OK. So let's start beginning of this paragraph. The experience of using data to evaluate campaigns. Okay, I did not get that from the preceding paragraph. So this is a transitional sentence that doesn't necessarily lead on from the preceding one. The experience of using data to evaluate campaigns to produce creative content and analyze the market environment has demonstrably improved my understanding of digital marketing and capabilities within this field. Okay. To be specific, okay, good. To be specific, digital marketing tools could guide companies to analyze and promote the participation of user communities in social media marketing. Okay, so the issue with this is that even to somebody who, I mean, I've run companies, but I don't have a marketing degree, of course, right? But this just seems kind of obvious. Uh, this doesn't seem like something that would be postgraduate study worthy. Next, moreover, I have come to understand the power of data in sales and customer relationship management and have also learned how to perform multiple roles in a team. Okay, so this was never mentioned anywhere kind of earlier, perform multiple roles in a team, which is an essential skill in the workplace. Again, so remember I said like, don't use things like to be specific and then moreover and then besides, and the, oh, and never use to sum up, remove that right away. Okay, so, so you notice these things at the very beginning, it, it just can't, those are things that are trying to masquerade as structure, but it's not structure, okay? To be specific or whatever is a fine one, okay? Um, but again, the sentence or whatever is kind of overly generic and arguably unnecessary. Uh, the next one in terms of the, the power of data in sales and customer relationship, man, it's kind of obvious, right? I, and I've also learned to perform multiple roles, and you don't really perform a role, right? You, uh, you know, you serve multiple roles. Right, which is an essential skill in the workplace. Again, this is not necessary, which is an essential skill in the work. It's, again, it's just obvious, right? Uh, serving multiple roles in a team is great, but again, you haven't mentioned what those roles are, which is an issue, okay? And then the word besides is not a good word. It's very colloquial. I have learned how to summarize effective strategies to raise brand awareness on Chinese social media for overseas brands. What do you mean summarize effective strategies? How did you do that? By making media clippings, what does that mean? And monitoring consumer involvement in their again, this is something that I mean. It's honestly, it sounds good, right? But where was that? Where, where did you do this? When did you do this? This is something that's kind of coming out of nowhere. Okay. To sum up, again, no way. Having gained a deeper understanding of digital marketing qualities on the internet, I think. I, don't quote me on this. If it's a proper noun, should we capitalize internet? Again, don't quote me, not sure. And in consulting industry, I've grown from a bookish student to a marketing that no, 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 no. Take this out. Take this out. It's just it's just inappropriate. It, it's it's not professional. Okay, take it out. Through several internships. Okay, how many internships did you have? Just give the exact number that you had, right? Again, if you were trying to define them up here, remember there's that one intermediate thing about I applied for internships. How many internships did you have? Just, and again, why are we talking about it again here, right? I find that I want, or you found, presumably, that I want a deeper and more nuanced understanding of the academic theories, frameworks, and principles underlying. It's not, the marketing discipline doesn't make any sense, just marketing, right? Or the field of marketing, right? LSC is first and foremost, okay, do not start, do not end this paragraph with something about LSE. Okay, uh, as you guys know from watching my other videos about personal statements, you need a, a fully new paragraph if you're going to launch into something on that. And do you see how already, well, first of all, never start a paragraph with something like for these reasons, right? Um, so the training provided by LSE fits my, my needs perfectly. Okay, so that already could just 
you could have this or whatever, what, I haven't even read this yet, but you can use that to be able to transition in from the preceding paragraph if you decide to keep it in. LSC is first and foremost a highly rigorous academic institution, therefore I could take a scientific and academic approach to marketing. Well, no, not that you believe is useful. It's got to be critical to you, not useful, right, when you start working. And also, some of these schools like LSE, they want you to already have been doing work, right? So obviously, you've been doing internships, which is great because that could count. But when you say something like, when I start working, it suggests that you are inexperienced, okay? because it gives me a different perspective of marketing. No, this is not, mm-mm. LSE is first and foremost, highly, re okay, yes, but this is like obvious, right? Um, therefore, I could take a scientific and academic approach to marketing, but you should be doing that anyway, which I believe is useful. Yeah, but useful is not a serious enough word. When I start working, again, doesn't make you look good because it gives me a different perspective of marketing. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so this is unnecessary, take it out or whatever, give me the stuff about LSE. For these reasons, again, delete. The training provided by LSE fits my needs perfectly. Okay, that, that's fine to say. Just remember when we're going through this paragraph, one of the things I've been looking for is, what are you bringing to LSE, not what is LSE going to do for you? I'm excited, okay, take away anything about you're excited or anything like you're interested, any of these things, right? I'm excited about the opportunity to learn how to integrate strategy, technology, and innovation in my marketing skill set to prepare me for being a marketer in this constantly evolving digital area. So what is it be? being a marketer though, right? I mean, specifically what do you want to do with it? This will provide me with the capability to undertake both logical analysis and innovative creative projects. Okay, one and two module, is it modules? Because it's one and two, will allow me to learn. Again, it's not gonna allow you to learn anything, right? So it's, it's going to teach you something, right? And it, what do they refer to it as online? Do they refer to it as module? Do they refer to it as courses? will allow me to learn the research methods used by well-established companies and develop, uh, again, no need for a comma here, and develop an analytics toolkit to manage and analyze, no, because it's analytics and analyze, right? Um, no, analyze data such as by scraping the web for data and sentiment analysis. I am keen to go deeper into the personal domain. I don't understand what that means and to learn how to take account of the perspective, it doesn't make sense, of the chief marketing officer rather than the brand manager in strategic, is that a course? Strategic decision making? This doesn't really make sense to me. In addition, the marketing action learning project will provide me with an opportunity to develop practical marketing skills and bring together the marketing knowledge, again, too much marketing, marketing, market, too much. So delete this one. I have developed, again, no comma, and we'll develop, okay, you gotta get a copy editor to look at this thing, this grammar issue's all over the place, remove this too, and here's this comma. I also appreciate the small cohort size at LSE, so there will be plentiful opportunities to form strong relationships with my lecturers and classmates. Don't plan on this, especially not at an institution like, like LSE from experience, right? A classmate, sure. Right, a, a close, strong relationship with lecturers that's overly familiar in you know British academia at the highest levels. Lastly, again, not great, I especially value the flexibility to take other modules from the management department, which would give me the chance to get a more macro view on business strategy, for example, but, but, but. Harnessing the power of analytical skills and innovative mindsets. I don't understand. Just innovative mindsets. The MSc Marketing Program at LSC will equip me with the theoretical and practical tools necessary to design and execute marketing strategies based on scientific, and, okay, but scientific and data-driven are the same thing. Also, data-driven should be hyphenated. So that, not so that, such that I can shape myself, that's not a good turn of phrase, into a marketing profession where they're gonna shape you. You're not gonna shape yourself. This is grad school. With both Okay, this is the problem. Again, you've been using Oxford comma, all of a sudden there's no Oxford comma analytical, and you've got three things, but you're saying both, which implies two things. With logical, analytical, and innovative abilities, I look forward to contributing to class discussions and group projects using my experience and knowledge of the Chinese market and my strength in designing creative campaigns. I would say plural strength to strengths. I would also be happy to contribute to producing social media content, e.g. sharing my experience of live streaming, just say e.g. live streaming, for the management department at LSE. 
Furthermore, again, no more of these things like furthermore. I'm excited to exchange ideas with others by taking an active role in organizing events that will benefit me and my peers. Okay, but there, again, we, we didn't really talk about any, again, this is not exactly the type of program where you talk about a supervisor or anything like this per se. Um, but we also didn't talk about what you want to do after you finish. All we know is that you want to go into marketing and digital marketing, which of course there's different types of marketing. Digital is one of them, but these days, you know, pardon the pun, the market share of marketing is in digital marketing. Again, too much use the word marketing, but you get the idea, right? Again, so this, this is uh, a personal statement that uh, needs to be rewritten. Um, this is one basically that currently lacks structure. Um, it is either overly high sensitivity at points uh, or when it talks about the program, overly high specificity, talking about individual what the writer refers to as modules. The paragraphs do not flow one from the other and it's insufficiently clear how it is that the program is going to help this individual to be able to meet their actual goals in their life, practically speaking. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening today. I appreciate you listening. Again, going through these is, uh, it's a pleasure. I obviously know that it is, uh, it's a challenging thing to hear. Um, somebody going through really, really brutally. Um, you should just know that, you know, it, again, it comes out of love. It comes out of care. Uh, don't ask family members. Don't ask friends. Don't ask career services. Don't ask mentors who you're too close with to give you an objective sense of what's going on in your personal statement. Uh, there, there are resources out there for you. Obviously, I am one such resource where, you know, I, it would be a pleasure to be able to work with anyone to be able to actually, you know, guide them in the shaping of their personal statement to be able to make sure that we maximize its quality. I obviously can do copy editing for you in terms of taking a look at the grammar and all. I certainly do nothing like writing personal statements that is deeply unethical, but certainly from the, my 18 years of experience in reading these things, I can give you a lot of insight in terms of what graduate and postdoctoral supervisors are looking for, as well as individuals uh, who are going to be on committees. Uh, when it comes to getting hired for tenure track positions. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.